Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Christy Mulkey with 240 Tutoring. I'm the workshop coordinator and this video is on effective cramming. I actually just did this live on Facebook a few minutes ago. We had a technical glitch and so I'm re-recording it so that we can post it on all our other social media outlets. So I want to talk to you today about how do you prepare for a certification exam or a standardized exam when you have a limited amount of time. So let's get started we're gonna effectively cram. Now I'm gonna share my screen with you so that you can follow along and see everything I'm talking about. So we are talking about effective cramming and that is going to be test prep strategies on a time crunch. So in this case, we're looking at a two to three week window. So when you have three weeks or less to prepare for your exam, here are some strategies you can follow to give you the best chance possible to be successful. Now at 240 Tutoring, we always recommend that you take two to three months to study if possible, but we know sometimes life gets in the way and we just need some simple steps to follow. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So if maybe you've been asked to add a certification so you can teach something else by your administrator, or you've decided to apply for a job and you need another certification, or let's be honest, maybe you just procrastinated and now you only have a few weeks to study and you're trying to figure out how do I do this? So I'm gonna give you some simple steps to follow. So let's get going. First thing you need to know is you've got to know the test structure. So this is gonna be task one for you, is I need you to go find that test blueprint. Now blueprint is just something that tells us the structure of that test how it's laid out. So we need to know time limits if those exist. Oops, sorry. Time limits if those exist and number of questions. All right, so total number and then number of questions by topic. And so this is a essential information to cramming. We have to know that. And then the next thing I want you to look for is pretty much in every standardized test in that blueprint, they're going to have that content broken into categories or topics or standards or competencies, wherever they, however they have it done. Those can range from three to up to 10 or 12 competency standards topics that are going to appear on that test. So basically they're looking at, have all these questions and these eight questions or these 15 questions all fit under this topic. So what we need to know is how much weight is given to those topics. And by weight, I mean how many questions are under that topic. So let's say I'm taking a general science test and there are four different categories or topics. We've got life science and earth science and physical science, and then maybe science safety and processes. And so we've got four different topics there. We need to know what those are. And let's say that they told us on that science test that life science was 60% of the test. And then maybe earth science was 25% of the test. And then maybe physical science is 10% of the test. And then, you know, that science safety and procedures is another 5%. Now that's not very realistic. It'd probably be a lot more even, but we need to know that information. And what I want you to do is what I just did, list them out from greatest to least. So I want you to list out those topics and figure out what has the heavier weight, what has the least amount of weight. And by weight, we mean number of questions. So if we were looking at a 50 question test, how many of those 50 questions? Well, 60%, how many is that? 25%, how many is that? So that's the first thing we need to know. This is task number one. First thing I want you to do. Now we're going to actually use that information to code and plan what we're going to do to study our cream. So here's the next thing I want you to look at is we've got to figure out what you know and what you don't know. So we're going to look at what do you already know and what do you still need to learn. This is essential to effective creaming. 
you can't just start studying. You will waste time and it's precious to you at this point. So you need to find some type of diagnostic test. So that diagnostic test will tell you, it's a sampling of the real test. What you know, what you kind of know, and what you really don't know. And so that is going to be crucial to your study. And so 240 Tutoring provides one of these for free on our website. And so if you need a free diagnostic test, go find your test, go find that diagnostic test, and there you go. A lot of um, test creators, so whatever company creates your test, will provide a free test. Some states provide a free sample test. All of those can serve as diagnostic. It doesn't have to be called diagnostic. You just need a representative test because we're gonna use it to diagnose you. What do you know and what do you still need to learn? Now, once you take that test, you're gonna to need to look at your data, okay? This is what teachers do. And um, if you watched my live video, you heard me say, this is the same strategy I would use as a teacher if I was looking at a kid who had a small amount of time frame and I needed to get them ready for a test. Same steps, okay? So we're gonna take that data from that diagnostic test and we're gonna examine it. So we're gonna look by content or topic. Now I have a note in here, and this is something I failed to say in the live, so we'll add it in here. Um, if you are taking a multi-subject test, so some of our states that have um, tests with subtests within them. So a lot of elementary tests will have an ELAR, a science, a social studies, and a math. You're going to have to look at your data by subtest, okay? Um, or by content or topic. So we're going to have to approach it two different ways. Now in this scenario, we're going to go with content or topic, but you can follow the same steps if you're taking a test that has multiple subtests. So you're gonna need some kind of report, hopefully. If you take our 240 tutoring diagnostic test, we will generate a report for you that will tell you how you did by topic. Um, you can do this yourself. So you can just look at what questions did I get right? What topic does that fall under? And what did I get wrong? And what topic does that fall under? So you're gonna to have to figure that out if you choose to take a test that doesn't provide you any kind of report. Now we're going to color code that and I'm going to show you on the next slide exactly how I want you to do that. So here we go. We're going to color code those topics from that diagnostic test. So I want you to look at how did you do on those topics. So let's say I took that science test that we were talking about, the theoretical one with the bad percentages, but we're going to roll with it. And let's say my weakest area weakest area was physical science. So in that weakest area, I'm looking at, I got less than 50% of the questions right. Not that I made a 50 overall, but let's say there were 10 questions in physical science and I only got three out of 10 correct. So that's what would go over here, less than 50%. So let's say physical science was my weakest. Let's say my strongest, the ones I got greater than, you know, that 65 to 70% of those questions. Correct. So again, if we had 10 questions there, we'd be looking at six to seven of those were correct. Let's say for this scenario, that was for me, earth science. Now, it's a little bit ironic because most people struggle with earth science more than any other strand of science, but we're gonna pretend for just a minute. So earth science, that's where I did really well. Now the bubble, the ones in the middle, are gonna be the ones anywhere from that 45 to 65%, okay? So if I had 10 questions, I got four to six of them right, somewhere in that range. So I'm not good at it, but I'm not horrible at it either. I kinda know some things. So these are what we're gonna call the bubble questions. And let's say for this scenario, for me that was life science and maybe those science safety procedures and processes, okay? So I'm gonna list those out, color-coded. Red, I did not do well at all, by topic. Yellow, that bubble area, 
uh, I can, I'm, I'm not quite there, but I'm getting there. And then green, I got this. I, I pretty much know this content. I can demonstrate some mastery. So once you have that done, this is going to be task two, okay? We're gonna move on. And we're actually gonna look at how do I study this? Now that I have all this data, what do I do to study? So I want to take a real simple approach to help you figure out how to do that. Now written out like this, it looks confusing. So I have a graphic to help you out. So let's take a look. I want you to look at this graphic. Now over here, you will note we have the content topics by how I did on them. So from the ones I did the poorest on to the ones I did the weakest on. Then down here, we have those same topics listed from the ones with the least amount of questions to the ones with the most amount of questions, okay? Now that's the thing we have to start with. So you're gonna take those topics and start writing them in. So for me, I did really strong in earth science, but it was a medium weight on the test. So I'm gonna list earth science right here. I was on the bubble on life science, but it was the most heavily weighted. So I'm gonna list that one right here. Then I did really poorly on the physical science, but it was a pretty low weight. Did I say it poorly? Yeah, poorly on the physical science. It was a low weight on the test. So it's either gonna be here or at best here. And then that science safety was a bubble for me, but it is a low weight on the test. So I'm gonna list it, list it here. Now in this example, I only have four topics, so it's a little bit tricky. If you have a test like that, you may have to break this down a little bit more. So let's say earth science included some space science. So let's say earth science had 10 questions. And of that 10, um, three of the 10 were on space. So, you know, the moon, the sun, the earth, and how they all move and relate to each other. And I actually missed two of those three questions, okay? So I might put space science down here. I might just break some of that apart. And you absolutely can do that. So if you need to break that down a little bit more specifically, you can. Now I'm gonna erase all that just so I can draw a little bit more. So once you have them all listed in there, now let's focus. The first area I want you to focus, focus on is your bubble topics that have the highest weight on the test. So if you had anything in this box, this is where we're gonna start. We're gonna start right here. And we're gonna focus on that content. I'm gonna study there first. The next set of content I'm gonna focus on is my bubble content. It had a medium weight on the test, okay? I'm gonna talk about why we're starting with the bubble in just a second. But that's where we're gonna start. Those two things. Bubble questions that have heavy weight, bubble questions that had a medium weight. Then the next thing we're gonna to move to is those weak questions that have a high weight or those weak topics that have a heavy weight on the test. I've got to take a look at that. If time allows, I'm gonna move here. Notice, big note, if time allows. This is the fourth area to focus on, those weak questions with a medium weight. Now, let me show you something and tell you some common things that people do wrong. People will start just studying. I've got to study science, I've got to study science. And they'll start studying all this stuff. Well guys, when time is precious, you don't want to spend time studying things you really already know. That's not effective use of your time. So we're going to go with, I know those, I'm not going to spend time studying them, or not a great deal anyways, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Another common mistake is people will spend all their time looking at this red wheat content. So let's say I did poorly in safety, but it's only 5% of the test. Why would I spend hours studying there? I'm just not gonna get much bang for my buck. And when I have a time crunch, I've gotta get the most out of every minute that I have. So I'm not gonna focus on these areas. So if you had anything in these boxes, we're not touching it. Now what I wanna show you is for most tests, most tests, these certification exams especially, 
we're looking at around a 60 to 70% passing. So you need to get 60, 60 to 70% of those questions right in order to pass. That can vary, it can go down, it can go up. So don't hold me to that. Know what it is for your state and your test. I wanna show you something. I'm just gonna kind of mark this off where you can see. Ooh, let's undo that. My pen sometimes goes a little crazy. Okay, so let me try that again. We're gonna look at, oh, pen back. I'm gonna just draw some lines in here because I want you, oh, that pen. Eraser, one more time. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw some lines in here so you can see. This is visually very powerful. So I know I'm taking some time to do it, but I have a point, I promise, okay? So if we look at this and we need 60%, if we study, we already knew all of this and we fill in these holes I've got more than half the content of the test. That's so powerful. If I can even add this in, that's great. All right, but the mistake so many people make is they spend time studying up here. And they already knew this stuff. Or they spend time studying over here and it's just too far to go. I've gotta get from here, what I don't know, to here to be mastery and I only have two weeks to do it. I can't do that if I'm way back here. So. I'm not even gonna focus here. I want to try to get the best use of my time. So now that's your last step. So blueprint, know the weight. Take the diagnostic test, get your data, and then use that to figure out what you're gonna study first, okay? From there, you're gonna make a plan. You're gonna make a plan. And so you're gonna know what you need to study from that last slide, from that graphic. You know, there's bubble areas with heavy weight, bubble areas with medium weight, weak areas with heavy weight. Though that's the focus, and I'm listing those out in order. Next step, identify your resources. You've gotta figure out what resources you're gonna to use to study that content. Now, let me tell you about resources. When it comes to test prep, there's basically two types of test prep, maybe a third, okay? But one will be a lot of practice questions and a lot of practice tests. That's great if you're getting familiar with the, the format and timing and all of that, but it's not going to help you learn what you don't know. And so that is critical. So in this case, we don't need a resource that just has test. We actually need some content. Now, if you choose a resource that has test, you're going to need to couple it with another resource that has content because we've actually got to go back and learn that content. And so how do I learn this information so I can do well the next time I see a question about it? Make sure those resources are reliable, that they're aligned to your test and to your state, to your standards. Now, once you have those resources, you're gonna schedule your time, all right? So set a time, aside time each day, if at all possible. Now, if you have some crazy days like, you know, Monday, my schedule's just nuts, I can't. Well, you can make up that time other days of the week, but schedule it. Put it in your planner, put it in your calendar, put it in your phone, however you need to. Schedule that time, make it a priority, and focus it. Now I know what I'm going to do. Chunk up that time if you need to. So maybe you get up 30 minutes early and you have 30 minutes in the morning. Maybe you take your hour lunch break and you take 15 minutes to eat and you take 45 minutes to study. Maybe you come home relax for a little bit, take an hour to study, eat dinner, take another 45 minutes to study. You can get more focused time if you break it into those smaller chunks. Now, once you have that time in your calendar, figure out exactly what you're gonna study each session. So you already know what, you're, what you need to study. Now, plan that. So today at lunch, I have 45 minutes, I'm not sitting there going, well, what am I gonna study? What do I need to get? You already know, you have that ready to go. Now, here's the thing I wanted to come back to. If time allows, so let's say you schedule that all out and you realize I have a little chunk of time a couple of days before the test. You can do a 
quick review of other content not addressed through this process. So you can go back and review some of that green. Maybe the areas where you felt just like, oh, I know it, but maybe I'm a little unsure. Maybe go back and review some of that weaker content, but it's only if time allows. Now, some general tips to help you as you cream. Find a quiet space to focus. You've got to have some quiet space. So maybe you leave your house. Maybe you put um, go into your room and close the door. Um, when I was working on my doctorate, I remember going and sitting in my car because I had small children and I would just go sit in my car because it was quiet and I could focus. Um, maybe you go to a coffee shop and put on some headphones and that whatever you need to do that's a quiet space, um, not where a lot of people are going to be interrupting you. Set little goals for each study session and reward yourself for those goals. Like, I'm going to get this much done. And if I do, I'm going to give me a snack or I'm going to watch a little TV. Um, you can set that. So maybe I'm going to study for an hour. And as soon as I'm finished, I'm going to sit down and watch this um, movie with my friend or whatever the case may be. Just set little goals. All this, oh, this is a big tip. We all like to study with someone, or most people do. I want you to only use a study buddy if they are in the same situation. By that, I mean same test, and they're also creaming. It can be really dangerous to study for the same test with someone who has three months, because they're going to be more likely to get off topic. They're going to be more likely to move slowly, and you need to focus, and you need to move quickly. So only if they're in the same situation. Again, use reliable resources. Then have realistic expectations of yourself. Don't tell yourself on a Saturday you're going to study for 10 hours straight. It's not going to happen. Most people cannot do that. So if you have a hard time attending to a task, set reasonable expectations. Break it up into chunks. You're more likely to do four two-hour chunks than to try to do eight hours straight. Also have realistic expectations of your resources. Guys, there's no resource out there that you're going to find that has the same questions in their materials that you're going to see on your exam. Just not going to happen. One, if that company had that, that would be copyright infringement. Two, no state's ever going to give the exact test to any company. If they did, they'd already be millions of dollars and everybody would know who they are and everybody would be using them. So it's just not a realistic expectation to think that any test prep resource is gonna have these same questions that are gonna be on the test. Also know that the content may not exactly be what you see. So maybe you watch a video that talks about place value and it doesn't go past tenths and hundreds and then you get to the test and see something on thousands. That could happen because there's no resource that's going to have every bit of content you could ever need to know. So just keep that in mind. Question, should I do another practice test? Y'all, this one's a big if. There are pros and cons to this. If time allows you finish all your study and you kind of want to see where you are and how much you've grown, you can take another practice test if you have access to one. Now, pros... It can give you a boost of confidence if you do well. Con, if you don't, it can really send your stress through the roof. And so what I recommend are little quizzes along the way. Now, if you're using our 240 tutoring materials, as you finish each set, set of content, there will be a short quiz that you can take to kind of see, did I get that? Did I learn that? And so little quizzes along the way. You can also pull from other resources and do some practice questions related to that topic. A big test at the end, it, it can be helpful if you do well, but if you don't, it can really be a hurt to your self-esteem and to your stress level. Um, vocabulary, here's a big tip. As you're going through content, as you're doing those little quizzes or practice questions along the way, so you're looking at that content and practice, I want you to keep a little running list of words you don't know. Okay, keep a running list, type it, write it, whatever you need to do. Keep a running list of words you don't know. Those can be content words. So maybe I don't know what erosion is. Maybe I don't know what the Pythagorean theorem is, whatever it may be. Maybe I don't know what phonemic awareness is. Write those down. They could be academic language. So things we use in education that just aren't used every day or used in a slightly different content or context like diagnostic, what's that mean? So as you come across words you don't know, write them down. And then go back and look up those definitions. And if you're struggling with them, make you some flashcards. 
There are some resources like 242 tutoring that have flashcards built in so that you can review that key vocabulary as you're studying. Now some final thoughts. I want to throw this in for retesters. If you have taken an exam and have failed it, this process will work for you. This process will work for you. So if you've taken an exam and failed it and not done as well as you wanted to, I want you to take that score report you get because it will already most likely be broken into topics, competency standards, categories, for you with percentages and number of questions you got right. So half the legwork's already done. Then you can go through the same steps and plan how you're gonna prepare for your next test. Because a lot of people test 30, 45, 60 days, 90 days, depending on how long you have to wait right after. And so that's still a fairly limited time frame. So you can tackle that retest with the same steps that we just did here. Now, remember, we want to focus and work smart. Time crunch, we're working smart. If you need some other resources, please follow us on social media. I will have the links to all of these things I've listed here in the comments of these videos. So this will be on Facebook. The live was on Facebook. Um, it will be in our test specific groups, YouTube, Instagram. So follow us there. You'll also find a lot of other resources on those social media pages. So take a look. Um, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments. We do monitor those and try to respond to those as quick as possible. Or you can email us at workshops at 242tutoring.com and we will get back to you to provide the best assistance we can. Of course, there are links to our resource pages and our study guides. So I wish you all the best in your cramming efforts and know that we are here to help you. This again is Dr. Christy Mulkey with 242 Tutoring. Thank you.